Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. It's Kim here. And today is a Thrifty Canucks video. It is pre-recorded on Wednesday to show on Thursday. Uh, because I I also did a happy mail video today and tomorrow I'm spending the whole day doing my happy mail getting that done. And so I wanted to get this video done today so that it would be ready for 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 Thursday. <laughs> Are you keeping up? Good. So this is part of my um haul from Manitoba. It's a combination of uh, things that I thrifted, things I was gifted, um, things I found along the way, stole, begged and borrowed. Uh, it's a little bit of everything. So um, we are working out of suitcase number two, and I'm just going to look at the time for myself just to make sure I give myself enough time. I don't know if I'll get through the whole big bag of stuff, um, but I will show you as much as I can. And then I will cut it off and it'll go on to the next one <laughs> because there is just so much. It's almost embarrassing to show you all the things that I got while in my travels. And it's all mixed up because everything was put in based on when I got it and uh, how it would fit in the little nooks and crannies and spaces in between. Um, so it is all mixed up. And also the way it came out of my suitcase, you know, I just kind of pulled everything out and stuck it all into a bag and said, okay, this is suitcase number two. And then suitcase number three will be coming up as well. And there's two boxes that are, that I've got from the post office or that I had sent uh, through the post office. So starting with, um, this was, uh, gifted to me by Hazel. Now, if you have been watching my channel, you know that Hazel came to meet up with me in Manitoba and we had a blast thrifting with Thelma and Ruth. Uh, Ruth is from St. Anne. Um, she's a su subscriber to both of our channels and now is part of the group of the um, artisan group that gets together in Manitoba. And so automatically we got to see her there as well. Uh, so Ruth came with us. And then on the one day, Barb Stewart came with us. Uh, that's the Barb Stewart that I know. Uh, although I now know the Barb Stewart from, from uh, New Zealand through uh, Caroline's Craft Tree. But this is the other Barb Stewart. <laughs> and this Barb Stewart is a Stampin' Up! rep. And she has her, uh, her uh, Facebook group called Barb Inc. And she will be venturing into YouTube soon. Right, Barbara? <laughs> Anyway, um, on the day that I was thrifting with Hazel and Ruth and Thelma, we ended up, uh, oh no, that was with Barb. It was with Barb, yes. Uh, uh, so it was Hazel, Barb, and Thelma and myself, the four of us, because we could only fit four in the car. If we could fit 10, you know, if we could do the clown thing, we would. Um, but we can only fit four of us. So Hazel found four stacks of these. Aren't these awesome? So they're just little, we're not quite sure what they were, but they're just little card things of sorts. Uh, I'm going to open mine up. And they're scored on the side. So it's almost like a pocket slash belly band because they're scored right here. Isn't this cool? So you could put um, a picture in here, you could put some acetate in here, and you can put this right into a journal. And, and I just I love these. These are just so cute. And so we each got a stack of them. I think she gave some to Thelma too. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but there's quite a lot here. So yeah, fun pieces. But it just brings to mind something that I could do for myself one day. So, so yeah, stay tuned. I might be making these. Um, but yeah, that's, so that came from Hazel. You know, a lot of times when we're thrifting and we get a big bunch of something, we usually share it or cut it in fours or whatever, you know, depending on who wants a piece or some of something. So, so yeah, Hazel gave me a stack and gave, uh, uh, Thelma a stack. So the other thing I got, um, now this I thrifted myself. I don't remember which store, but it was 50 cents. It's a notepad that says market list. Uh, that can easily be covered or cut off. And it's labeled 1 to 18, which gives you lots of opportunity for journaling. Love the colors. Would fit in a peacock journal or an ocean journal or, you know, just anything. I use it for backing on the back side of journal cards. Um, and I, I use some of it... Um, on that crop weekend uh, to create some some um, pieces. Now, normally at the crops, I don't get anything done. 
Um, but I uh, brought a few papers with me uh, to play with, and I started making these little scrappy books. They're made up with a combination of ephemera, like digital ephemeras, and um, uh, some notebook papers and brown paper packaging, graph paper, and that. And then at the end, I put one of these uh, note pages. So they're just clipped together with one of those metal clips. Now, this is not the project that I've got in mind for in the future, um, but this was just something to play with. And I'm, you know, I never really make anything at these things. I do a lot of talking uh, and, and socializing. Um, but this time I, you know, I really wanted to make some of these just to try it out and, and use up some of these pieces. And so I made a few for girls that are into the junk journaling there and handed them out just to give them another idea of something to create. And uh, so I came home with a couple of samples for myself to further play with uh, my own stuff. And uh, yeah, so that just shows you where I use the, the notepad in this, in this um, for making these. So I'm going to start a pile on the floor here and then I will put that pile away, that pile over there, and I'll just keep taking from this pile. So um, Hazel um, loved the thrifting. We got her up, you know, <laughs> I would pick her up at one day was seven, one day was a couple of days was 7.30. <laughs> Or vice versa, I can't remember. Um, but I remember getting in the car, or her getting in the car one morning. I said, good morning, and I was smiling. She said, you smile already. You're already happy at this time of the morning. And I said, I'm one of those annoying, happy people, because <laughs> I am. Um, but, you know, as much as she thrifted, and as much as she said, I can't believe how much we're thrifting, and that we go so much, and we go so many places, I will tell you, on the last day, on the way to the airport, we stopped at an antique show. We were there for about an hour. Hazel was the last person to come out of the show. Although I did go, uh, there was a, uh, a booth outside of the the um, um, the main part of the venue where I went and made a deal on some envelopes, which you'll see after. Um, but she was the last one to come out of the antique show because. At first we were all together and then we went different ways and, and uh, shopped differently. And um, so she was the last there. Then on the, on the way to the airport, we stopped at a value village because our plan when she got there was to stop at two places before we took her for lunch, but uh, we were running out of time. And so I wanted to take her to the last value village that she hadn't been to. And again, she was the last one to come to the checkout. Um, so yeah, I think she really enjoyed it. Every moment of thrifting that she could get in, she got in and, you know, I'm telling cause you know, I was there to see it and we have pictures of her leaving the value village. I haven't given you those pictures yet, Hazel, but you have this big smile on your face. And then I have pictures of her, uh, at the airport where she's very, very sad. So I know she could have thrifted another 10 days easy. <laughs> we had to send a container home with her, but she would have thrifted for another 10 days. Anyway, one of her very last purchases was she purchased five of these books. And look at the price she paid, $1.49. Um, she got a discount on it because I still had a coupon left. Um, and then uh, it's, a, it's a music book. And so she gave one to me and one to Thelma and kept a couple for herself that she took home. So, so yeah, it was fun. She also thrifted another, uh, another book. And she said, are you interested in this? And I said, yeah, if you don't want it. And I will show you that a little later. I don't know if it's in this batch or if it's in another batch, but it'll be coming up. So, so yeah, th she was the last person in the group to be leaving the Value Village on the last day before she got to the airport. <laughs> Thank you very much, Hazel. Um, and she did bring a lot of goodies for me. Some of them are, are here. Some of them you saw already. Uh, some you won't see until I get to the boxes, which is going to be a couple weeks down the road yet, I'm sure. Um, cause I got to space it out. Uh, I, there's just so much, but she did bring me this, uh, piano roll and these are all papers that she has eco dyed herself. And I love the colors on these. Now I've had piano roll before, you know, it's just kind of a, you know, like a coffee colored, uh, colored, uh, look to it. You know, it's, uh, aged paper. And, you know, for the most part, I, I used it up what I had and, and never went, you know, never searched out anymore. I just didn't feel a need for it. But now after seeing it with the, the uh, dye on it, it's really quite attractive. 
And so I'm going to have to go and, and get it. She gave me a piano roll. I don't know where that is either. Uh, but I'm going to have to go and get more. I do see them all the time. So I'm going to have to go get more of these. But look at this paper. Isn't this beautiful? And to think that this is music, right? Uh, just is amazing. Very pretty colors. Um, fun stuff that I will use. So she's cut it down to a size that's, I'm guessing it must be... Um, Yeah, it's 11 inches, and she's cut it down to eight and a half, so it's a nice fit. Good gosh, I've been measuring everything to eight and a half by 11 lately. Okay, gonna put that on the floor. I think this was the envelope that all kinds of goodies came in from her, so that's just in the pile. Um, my friend Vienna, uh, she came to meet me at the um, the crop day, uh, like our, our artist crop, where it's a combination of junk journalers and scrapbookers. And uh, she brought me a bunch of goodies. We did some trades. She wanted some golden books for me, so I brought them from New Brunswick. Although I have found uh, several places for her. Vienna, I hope you're watching. Be sure to go to Winkler, to Steinbach, and Altona. We found lots of golden books there. I think she collects them for her grandchildren or her grandson. Um, but I will continue to, to look for them and collect them for you um, uh, as we go along. But, you know, you might have to come and get them one day. Just saying. Um, so she dropped off some paper doilies for me that she has found in her travels. Um, you know, they're just the standard doilies, but I will ink stain them and avocado dye them and they'll be awesome to use for my projects. And she gifted me a huge, there's a few other things. And, and as I get to them, I will show you. But um, again, she gifted me a, probably about a, almost a two inch stack of these paper placemats. And so I gave some to Ruth. I gave some to um, Hazel. And I'm not sure if Thelma took some or not. Um, she may have, I'm not sure. Uh, but I still have a huge stack of them. It's an unusual shape. Um, the color is very, um, I thought, uh, 70s, but I realized when uh, Hazel posted these that she said it's 1984, So, which is right. It's the dusty rose of 1980s. Um, but they would make beautiful envelopes. So if you could consider that this would be the flap to your envelope, and maybe you would fold this down as the inside of the envelope, and then fold it up. There is an instant envelope. It might be a little large. You might want to cut it down to a more manageable size, but still it's an envelope. The uh, design is on here already. I would collage and enhance it further because, you know, it is sideways, but you know, just beautiful, uh, very easy to use uh, as well as to use it just for uh, journaling papers to put in your journal. You know, you can fold it up in different ways uh, to make it work. Uh, but lovely, lovely paper. So thank you so much, Vienna. I, I will enjoy this. Uh, and the fun thing with, with Vienna, uh, I wish I could show you, is uh, I I don't see ever anything with her name on it. Uh, you know, Vienna's an, an unusual name, a very pretty name and very unusual. So I was so thrilled to find a... Um, I guess it was kind of a little booklet about the country, Vienna. Is it the country or town? Is it Vienna? Yeah, well, it's Vienna. I don't know. Is it part of Switzerland or is it Vienna? Um, anyway, I found this booklet. <laughs> Jeez, I'm bad at geography. I got to go back and look. <laughs> Um, and, and it said Vienna right on the cover and, uh, it had, you know, some pictures of art and uh, locations and, and beautiful scenery and flowers. And so I was so happy to present it only to find out that the name was spelled just slightly different, <laughs> but I thought she would enjoy it anyway. And, um, yeah, it was a cool little booklet. So I hope you enjoy it, Vienna, even though it was spelt wrong and I don't know if it's country or town, uh, maybe I should have read the book first. <laughs> Uh, and from Hazel, she had given me some, some wallpaper samples, and here's another piece of that wallpaper. I knew there was more. I just didn't know where I packed it. You know, some things that were flat like this, I, I packed in that, that outside, on, uh, outside zipper pocket. You know, that big pocket that they, they put on suitcases. It, how do you lock that up or close that up? So you really don't want to put something in there that somebody's going to take. Um, so I figured, you know, scrapbook type papers and, and uh, large papers like this, I thought were pretty safe to be 
unlocked in my suitcase. The rest of it is locked up, of course, but uh, I thought it would be relatively safe. So anywhere where I could put some big stuff like that, like bags and, and large papers and scrap of paper, I tuck those in there. A couple of books that I didn't think anybody would steal. Um, so, so that's what I kind of was going with. So that's why this stuff ended up all over the place. So yes, love this wallpaper. It's very complimentary to the other two pieces that I have and in the colors that I love. And two more of these folders that she made with wallpaper. And I just love this. Uh, I love the idea. I love the gold butterflies on here. And the gold is, is just all around goodness. I know it's probably very shiny for you to look at. But um, just beautiful envelopes. So whether I keep them all as envelopes, I'm not sure. I, I may uh, take some apart to use uh, as um, journal paper. Uh, but it's just so pretty. I, I will definitely use these. And I love the idea. So here's another example of what went into um, that side pocket. Um, now, Ruth was with us on the when the Thursday, the Thursday. I'm getting my days mixed up. Hazel, too. We're getting everything mixed up. But um, Ruth was with us, and she uh, gifted me a, a little gift that you will see later on in the week. And it came in this beautiful bag. Now, because the gift she gave me was a little bit on the fragile side, I had to pack it a little bit differently in order to come home. Uh, but, you know, I can't get rid of the bag, right? It's it's gorgeous. Now, it's it's very translucent, so you can see through it. And I just thought, you know, I don't have anybody here that I would present with a gift bag. I don't think I would use a gift bag. But if you are ever out and about at thrift shops and you find these ones that have this, you know, it's kind of almost like vellum right? So I would buy these and cut them up to use um, as um, like an acetate piece if you were making a pocket, uh, a windowed pocket. Um, so I would put something like this in the window so you can see through it so you know that there's something inside there, but it also is, gives a little bit of, um, you know, privacy or whatever uh, and looks pretty. So this is going to get cut up. So Ruth, this is just as fun as the, the present inside. Uh, and now you're probably going, gee, I should have kept that bag. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to use this and cut it up and use it for my art. In fact, like all this, this is not a great example, but if you had one of these and you had this in, in the uh, center, you could still see through it to know if there was something inside there, but it gives you that little bit of privacy and just adds some interest to your project. I know this isn't the greatest example, um, but yeah, that's what I would use this for. And even the cord, I, I don't waste anything. All of this gets used and the bottom, they have a little insert to make the bag uh, sturdy. So that gets used. Um, um, I use it all. Um, even even these folded strips, um, this becomes belly bands or um, you can decorate this further and make clusters and snippets and all kinds of fun things. So, so keep your eye out for these bags when you go to the thrift shop yeah, because you can pick them up for 25 cents sometimes. Uh, and to buy these brand new, they, you know, I've seen them cost three and four dollars a piece. So yeah, keep an eye out for those. And, and they fit very flat in your suitcase whenever you, you uh, want to tuck it in and don't, don't have any other, uh, uh, issues about uh, theft or anything, you know, cause nobody's going to steal a plastic bag. Um, just slide it on the outside of your suitcase. <laughs> now I stopped at, um, Oh, I stopped at the shop in Vida and I'm giving another shout out here because it's a great little store in Vida of all places. Uh, is it MJ's store? I, you know what? Maybe Lori, if, if you could give me the exact name, I'll, and then I can link to the, they have a Facebook page. I can link to it. They have a ton of miscellaneous stuff. They're like a thrift shop. Uh, no, not a thrift shop. They're like a dollar store, but they have expensive items. They have furniture. They have a little bit of everything, and they really cater to the area. They have some craft stuff. Uh, I've bought rolls of ribbon there very inexpensively. And this time I only bought one thing. And yes, Jennifer and, and Deborah, if you're watching, these are for you. I spent a whole dollar twenty-five on each of you. Um, Jennifer, these are your colors. I know that it's tissue paper and you get five sheets in here. And so I thought, well, I know Deborah's got a little grand grandbaby coming and um, she might want to use this uh, for her grandbaby too. I just thought of you guys because you guys like the really bright colors and the, the uh, more whimsical uh, 
yeah, cutesy things. So I thought, <laughs> you know, if not, you got a barrel of monkeys right here. Um, so these are for you and going in your stash. So for when I get to see you, uh, Deborah and, and Jennifer, uh, Jennifer Dirtle and Deborah Ibram have, have their own channels. And um, uh, they both do Thrifty Canucks videos. So do watch their videos if you have a chance. Um, this next one is uh, one that I bought. This went into my suitcase. I don't remember what I paid for it. I don't see a price on here. I don't think it was a lot of money. But it's just uh, ledger type paper. And I love the look of it. I love the size of it. Um, this can be great to use as the back of journal cards. But it's also nice to just put in pages just like that and fold it up. Um, it's not super old. Probably... I would say probably 1980s, 1990s uh, style. I mean, not so much anymore, but uh, certainly nice. And then it's got this hardcover book uh, with a very small spine. I would probably saw my way through because uh, my, my it will not go through my uh, my uh, guillot guillotine cutter. Um, guillotine. Now, I say guillotine, but there is another way to say it. Guillotine, I think. I can't remember. Um, but, but both ways are correct. I have double checked on that. Um, so, so I have used, uh, my guillotine on some things, but this is just a tad too heavy. So I will probably saw through this and make two journals. And then what I would do is if it's not cut perfectly straight, or if it's got that, you know, raggedy look to it, I will just cover it with some type of trims or lace, um, and, and, uh, give it a nice finish either way. So then I would get two journal covers out of this because this is a good size if you split it in half and it's an unusual size um, because this would end up being um, let's just see if I can measure it here yeah it's uh, 14 inches so it would be about seven inches tall well depending on how I cut it but I would like to go halfway I think seven inches tall and it's about eight and a half wide so I would probably make it or leave it as it is eight and a half wide and seven inches tall so you could put some unusual types of papers in there and uh, have some fun with it so that's something for possibly in the future how am I doing for time oh boy gotta keep going here now this one I bought at and now was it $3.99 or was it $5.99 hmm I think it was $3.99 actually um it's a receipt book and I just love how old looking it looks it looks like it's never been, even been used um, I love the old pages I love the fact that there's carbon paper here um, which I will uh, put away and use for another project um, but yeah there's the yellow copy and the uh, white copy and they come four on a page and I love how old looking these look these ones are stapled together I don't know why um, but yeah, I think Thelma had given us, uh, some sheets like this, although hers was a little bit older probably. Um, uh, but I like this look and, you know, you can take four of these and, uh, accordion fold them and you've got a little booklet to, to stick in a journal. So they will be fun and there will be no shortage of these. So you can bet some of this is going in happy mail. In fact, I'm going to put it in the happy mail pile because I think my next batch of happy mail, these are going out. The ones I did today. So here is a fun uh, book too. This is um, their numbered coded pictures. Now there are, oh yeah, there is um, paint by number stuff on here. Oh, and so there are the colors. All right, I see now. And so you would paint these according to the colors. Now they show you the, the one with the numbers on it on the back side of the previous one. And then you color in on this one. That, I guess, is how it's done. Um, it looks like only the first one is um, worked on. And that's okay, too, because I can use this to glue on the back side so that I would have this as the um, back of a journal card or a tag. It's light enough in color that um, the, the uh, numbers and the picture on the back aren't going to be an interference for, for backing a journal card. And in fact, will probably create far more interest. Um, but yeah, that's how I would use this. Uh, as for the rest of the pages, I may fold them up into, uh, you know, journal size. Oh, it looks like they did someone another one here. Uh, looks like Aquaman almost. 
I don't think it's Jesus, but maybe. Uh, Wonders of the world. I don't know. It doesn't say. Um, but yeah, I would I would either fold it up or cut them in half and fold them in just to have an interesting page in a in a journal or use them for backing. Regardless, I don't think I paid more than a dollar for this. Yeah, I don't even remember which thrift shop, but I, I'm sure I wouldn't have paid more than a dollar. And, you know, I like to use everything else up. So this is a nice weight, uh, like a heavier cardstock weight. So this becomes the base for doing tags or journal cards. And then I just collage and decorate over top of it from there. Same with on the back side. Um, there is a page back here. And I don't know if there's any writing. Oh, yeah, there is writing on the back, too. So still, it's still a fun uh, weight of paper that I can use for journaling on. And this is actually a nice design to leave as a base uh, and then just build on it from there. So either way, fun book. And it's no wonder I had five suitcases of stuff. Why? This stuff is available here, too. But, you know, you just get caught up in the moment when you see it and you buy it. And, uh, and I use this stuff, so I'm not too disappointed um some airmail envelopes i paid a dollar for this um might have got these in altona not sure but airmail envelopes are always fun to use and the price is certainly a, a good price i don't know that these are really really old ones but um yeah i'm not gonna open it it's, it's just envelopes dollar Oh, here's one of the yearbooks that I picked up. Now, this one is from Steinbeck, 1957. So on average, um, that means that the person was probably born in 1939 if they're graduating and this is their graduating yearbook. Um, so most of those people would be in their 80s or 90s. I don't I'm not too concerned uh, about using these images, um, you know, because their names won't be recognizable. This is a public publication um, and, you know, there are editorials. So as long as you're not doing anything, you know, flammatory for these people, I, I'm pretty sure we're fine to use them. Also, all of the ads in here are a lot of fun uh, that can be added into your journals. Um is it, yeah, so it's all around there's lots of fun things that you can make. And, and I wouldn't do anything that would offend anybody, I don't think. Um, most of my stuff is pretty straightforward. And, yeah, the chances of, you know, being recognized in one of my journals is slim to none. I'm sure of that. I'm very sure. Based on how fast I work and... <laughs> And how fast, how often I actually pu uh, publish a journal uh, on YouTube, um, the chances are slim to none. So they, they most likely go into somebody's private collection where they'll never get seen again. Uh, but the pictures are just amazing to look at and to use. Uh, lots of fun. I bought several yearbooks. I just don't know where all of them are at this point. And it looks like I bought several sets of airmail cards because <laughs> here's another. Now, this was eight envelopes, and I want you to see the price here. Now, would you not buy this for 20 cents for eight envelopes? That's like math. Um, it's like not even three cents an envelope, right? 2.5 cents or something. Um, so yeah, of course I'm going to bring them all the way from Manitoba in my suitcases or in my boxes of stuff because it's 20 cents and, you know, it's kind of like, well, I can't leave it behind. So, so yeah, it's my weakness. Uh, I need to be on a program. Um, this is a German, uh, book. I, don't think it's very old. Um, I don't know if there's a publication that no. It says 1909, but I don't think so. It's got a vinyl cover. It's probably a reproduction of some sort. Um, yeah, I can't. It, yeah, this is just the content is from 1909, probably. But I just love the font and the um, you know the uh, weathered. Or, distressed pages just lovely and every once in a while there's one of these little paper inserts um here and there through the book oh look at wasn't expecting this but some look at that it's kitty cats now it is a calendar from 1982 written in another language i don't think it's german mm, 
maybe uh, maybe like it looks like it's either Ukrainian or or maybe Russian. I'm not sure. Maybe somebody will recognize it, but yeah, it's just a fun little booklet that I will cut up and use the uh, the uh, paper in my collages and stuff as background paper. But I really liked these um, pages. They're like an oil paper almost. It feels like an oil paper. Um, so yeah, fun fun book. I you know, 25 cents, 50 cents, not very much. So this will end up in happy mail as well. Actually, I'm going to put it here, send some out to you guys. Thelma found a couple of bookmarks and gave, gifted them to me. Uh, this one is the lighthouse. And on this one, it says a single rose can, can be my garden, a single friend, my world. And I thought, Oh, how so sweet. Thank you, Thelma. I love these very, very pretty. And I, I will use them. Um, no, oh, I don't remember who bought this. Was it you, Thelma? Thelma. This came from Thelma, I think. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. We all got a piece of this dress, or I got a piece of it. I don't know. It looks like a skirt, um, but this does say peacock journal right i don't know why uh, but thelma's making one barb is making one hazel's gathered up stuff for a peacock journal i've got some stuff going on the go for a peacock journal i think i will share some of this with caroline uh caroline i'll you know confirm with you that you want some so so that uh because there's a lot of material here so caroline i will send you some just uh letting you know but uh beautiful beautiful fabric Love all these sequins on here. I can't remember. Either it came from Thelma or we cut it up as a group, but I'm not sure. Somebody remind me. Now this one, I know Hazel found the dress somewhere in the in the group of of um the the we were giving they were giving things away on the sharing table, I think. I got part of the front bodice and it's got this teal blue uh, fabric underneath it and I know that I have more of this somewhere um, because I got part of the skirt um, the the uh, beadwork on here is just amazing um, and very colorful and it's done on the netting so I will uh, cut out this all out separately afterwards and use it and then the the skirt had this as an overlay over top. So all of, I'm going to show it here like this. So all of the skirt has this beadwork on it. And, you know, it's not hard to do, but it can be broken up into little sections. I will have a day and show you uh, a really good method to take some of this apart. Um, because there are a few little tricks uh, for using this stuff. So stay tuned for that. It will be coming up probably in the next, um, sometime in either April or May, uh, that I will show you how you can salvage this uh, the best way um, to reuse it. Um, so yeah, there's lots of it here. So yeah, I've got projects coming out of my ears. I just need more time, more time, more time. But lots of netting. Um, what I like to do with the netting, uh, to be quite honest, is I cut this into long strips. Some I will use um, for making tassels. But for the most part, this is great stuff to make ruffles with. Super, super easy to make a ruffle. Maybe one day I'll have to do a show and tell of how I do that. But um, I don't know when. <laughs> You'll have to remind me a few times. Um, the other nice thing about this, oh, I see I got both of them. How did I get both of these, Hazel? <laughs> Is the uh, belt on this dress, um, if you cut these off, they make really nice ties for journals. Um, I would just finish the end where it got cut off so that it's not, you know, all raggedy looking. I would probably fold this into a slip stitch. And then I would um, add some trinkets on here or something to make it a little bit more um, interesting. And then just tie it around the journal and let the ties hang down with the charms or, or uh, beads or whatever I put on it. So, so always keep that in mind when you are taking apart garments that everything can be used. Everything. I want to keep doing some more uh, garment uh, 
videos where I show you, see there's a few loose beads here um, that I'm not going to see. Uh, I want to show you a few more garments as I take them apart, but I don't know uh, when um, I will do this. Now this dress, a sari uh, top, look at the jewels on here. I hope you can see these. Just gorgeous. Now the dress, it was six fifty. Six fifty. And the um, gems are, you know, they're a little bit more uh, sporadic down at the bottom here and the back, but on the front, it has just as much on the hemline here. So again, beautiful pieces to take apart. It's kind of a, it's almost like a brocade uh, type of fabric on the outside. And then the, on the inside, mm, it's not silk, it's po polyester. It's not, this is not raw silk. Um, you can you, you I can tell that it's not um, but it's still equally nice to use for I cut this into strips as well for making tassels and um, uh, ruffles great for ruffles uh, there is no stretch in this one which is nice uh, so it'll be very nice for ruffles but Thelma found this for me now she wouldn't use yellow um, which is why she had no problem giving this to me if it was like purple or red we'd be fighting over every last bit of it I'm sure <laughs> Right, Thelma? <laughs> Especially if it was red. Um, but this was the price, six fifty. But when I got... Now, this was at the Kildonan Thrift Shop. Uh, when I got to the counter, it was 75% off. I paid, I think, a $1.48 ish. $1.70, something like that. Um, yeah, I can't do that math, Linda. That's where you come in. <laughs> I can't do that on the fly. But it was around a dollar fifty, dollar seventy, seventy ish price. Uh, like, come on. Of course, I had to take this home. Yes, this is the reason I'm. I have the problem I have. But I love it. I love everything about it. Now this is the back side all around. So look at the trim on here. Even if I just cut it uh, to this silver trim. This is a beautiful piece of trim to use on a journal, just like that. Um, yeah, it's just so much fun. The I always say the the um, possibilities. I just in the possibilities, I get my money's worth, and I haven't even made a thing. So so I get to enjoy this over and over and over again. But but just look at that, isn't that beautiful? Thank you for finding this for me, Thelma, and thank you, um, uh, Kildonan, um, Kildonan. What is it? thrift shop yeah Kildona thrift shop uh for the 75 percent off i will enjoy every moment of that i do love to give credit to different locations for you know when i find stuff uh wherever i can another yearbook this one is 5960 uh this is from the Mennonite Educational Institute in Leamington Ontario now is that where it actually is from I'm not sure there are some uh, dedications and some great imagery. And again, fun images to use in art. Um, great. Um, there's some great poems in there. There's some great advertisements in here. Uh, love it. Look at this. Isn't that a beautiful page? To, this would make a lovely envelope. Um, but the advertisements are well worth it. Um, now, somebody has checkmarked here, but it looks like it's done in pencil. So I'm sure I'll be able to remove that. Um, <laughs> I love these. They're so corny now. Uh, the bank, a pleasant place to work, the Toronto Dominion Bank. Well, there you go. Um, <laughs> but these fun little ads that can just be uh, mounted onto, you know, a cardstock back and then used as a journaling card. Uh, look at the old cars. Uh, our name is, is our number 509 cabs. Um, just fun imagery and fun, uh, little ads to add into a book because they were so corny back then. Right. And then look at the, the outside of this book. I love this paper. Uh, Thelma commented, or not Thelma, um, Hazel commented on that too. This is like that faux leather look, but this would make some lovely journal cards or even a, you know, small notebook cover or something. How are we doing for time? Ooh, we're already getting close. So I'm going to do a couple more things and I'm going to call it the end. 
Oh, let's see. I'll go up to here. So this is still suitcase number two, and I'm not done. Okay, this uh, was a piece of fabric that... This wasn't the skirt, was it? No, this was someone that Thelma gave to me as a gift. But there was a skirt. Um, yeah, because this one isn't as straight. The skirt was straighter. We Hazel and I split a skirt. I don't know where it is. Uh, but we split a skirt. But this is another piece of uh, fabric that Thelma gave to me, I believe. And it has the same um, method. It's a lace background. And then they've sewn... Um, kind of an eyelash trim over top of the lace. So great idea if you've got eyelash trims and lace you want to use up to make this kind of a, a collaged effect for your, uh, you know, maybe a journal cover or, or maybe some stuff that you're doing inside the journal. Um, very interesting, certainly not hard to do, um, but it's, it's very um, effective for this uh, piece of material it's kind of a creamy color like an off-white um, so a, a beautiful color that and a piece that you can you can cut this up in little bits or or uh, use in, in full length or even make a journal cover like an overlay for a journal cover um, I would still want something underneath definitely but it also might be nice for flips so yeah love this fabric and I, I'm pretty sure this came from Thelma so I'm going to enjoy it and say thank you Thelma um, and I will play with it in the future when I don't know this is amazing I I don't even want to consider how much is on here but you can see there's a lot this was a sari scarf and it was so bulky because of the thickness of this that no matter how I folded up the scarf it just took up a lot of room so I trimmed all of this off and then the the fabric itself is so thin that it folded up to no more than a hanky. Um, so when it was folded up, it really took no space. So it went in one of those little side pockets because I thought, who's going to steal a piece of fabric like this? It's all raggedy on along the edges. And all I did was I cut it uh, close to the edge. So you can see along here, I've cut it close to the edge. I will remove it probably um, when I go to use this. But look at this roll of trim. Now, this was on the edge on all four sides of the scarf. And it was kind of a long rectangular scarf. The trim alone uh, is probably worth 20 bucks, uh, at least if you added up all the yardage. And I'm sure there's got to be mm, probably, oh, two, four, at least six, maybe eight yards of fabric here. Or, or trim here uh, and I'm not going to bother to measure it but I'm I'm guessing I mean you can see the roll it, there's a lot so at least twenty dollars worth of trims here now I can use these as pieces like this um, or I can I can take this uh, you know I can cut a length of whatever length I want and I can undo just this uh, from from the backing because it's just stitched on with some very loose stitching so it's not hard see how easy it is to pull that off so I can use these all individually or I can use it as it is um, just like this. Just make a pocket or a belly band just like this. So yeah, there's a lot of mileage here. These are things that you want to watch for when you go thrifting. I'm sure the scarf cost me 3 or $4. I don't remember. You know, some things are a bit of a blur because we were just wild women. Uh, you know, some people go down to, to places like Florida and hang out at the beach for spring break. We thrift during spring break <laughs> and we're just as wild and we don't even need the alcohol. So, so <laughs> yeah, keep your eye out for sorry scarves because a lot of times these are the scarves that they wear over their, their, uh, clothing. It's like, um, it's like part of a sash kind of on their, their garment, um, it's not like the headscarf or anything. It's part of the, the sash. So keep your eye out for these because they're usually sold very inexpensively and you can see the mileage. And the reason I know is eventually I'm going to be showing you some trims from the um, Bombay fabric store that I bought that I paid a little bit more money for, but I, you know, I really liked them. And then when you see something like this and I, I know I should say to myself, why are you buying expensive trims? But they're so beautiful. Um, 
but yeah, so you can save yourself a lot of money by investing in a, a sari scarf and taking it apart. So keep your eye out for those. And those are my colors. You know that. Now, this piece of fabric came from Hazel. Uh, she found a large piece of it. This was in the, at the St. Pierre thrift shop. Hello, St. Pierre. Uh, St. Pierre, Manitoba. Um, it, I don't know if it was a... I think it was like a table runner or something. So she cut it into four. It's got a scar um a sewing pattern background and if you watched my video the other day I got that uh sewing tape um it's like a masking tape that you use to measure that uh, is sticky that will come up and and you can use it over and over again and it comes in uh one yard lengths and you there I think there was 20 one yard lengths on that roll um, but it was the same yellow as this. So I'll be sending some of this to you, Hazel. Um, but again, it looks like a sewing journal in the process. The other day I showed you those Eaton's um, um, seam binding rolls. And I was saying that the the uh, oh, the round covers on those are great for for uh, doing uh, journal, making journal tags. And again, it's, it's sewing, so it would be a part of this. So now a sewing book is coming together right in front of my eyes. Um, but yeah, beautiful piece of fabric. I could see easily getting two journals out of here, um, you know, depending on the direction I go. Um, yeah, gorgeous material. There's a zipper in here, scissors. Uh, so if you play around with that, there's the spool and thimble. Fun piece, piece of pattern. Got a piece of pattern today in, in uh, Happy Mail. That will uh, easily get used up for, for doing something like this. So, yeah, fun stuff. Um, so, yeah, whenever we had a chance to share things, we did. And uh, it's a great way to get a little bit of everything and, um, you know, share the expense in all of our pocketbooks. Now, this is, look at, isn't that beautiful? Mm, mm, this is the wrong side. So now it's going to be a question of, do I do one on this side or do I use this side? It's a quilted placemat. Hazel bought four of these and gave one to me. And I think she might have given one to Thelma. I bought four placemats and gave one to Hazel. It wasn't something that Thelma would want, so uh, she didn't get one. But each placemat, you can get two journals that would be about seven or eight inches. Yeah, okay, this looks like it's about 15 inches. So about seven inches long. There is nothing to do on here except a little bit of trim and sewing on the bottom. If I cut this in half, I get two journals. There's the inside. It's beautiful. So you fold it to make your journal cover. And so if I cut it right here, all I have to do is do a quick little zigzag stitch to close it to keep the filler from coming out and then add some trims on there. Um, it's very easy to add trim on and cover up any imperfections and you have an instant journal cover. Now, because this has only a limited amount of stitching on here, I would probably go back and forth on my sewing machine and just do some crazy stitching, you know, kind of a free freestyle stitching, uh, although I don't have that freestyle attachment but you know I would just uh, willy-nilly stitch all over the place just to give it a little bit more um, uh, design I guess is, is what I'm trying to say I'm not sure <clears throat> but um, it's instantly done so all I have to do is maybe a little trim on the bottom fill it with some pages and then start decorating uh, as far as ephemera and the inside pages but here again, I've got all of this trim. One of these is sure to match uh, very nicely. Like I can cut this green off or I can use this whole thing as part of the trim on this. Um, and, you know, maybe not exactly. Maybe more just the orange and the brown. <laughs> the green might be a little bit too much. But if you, I fold it over like that, like there's the trim on the bottom of this to cover up any imperfections from, from cutting the journal. And then when you cut it, you've got the same thing on this one. I would just flip it over and, and make this part the bottom and do the same thing. Put the, um, the trim on it to finish the bottom. Just showing you how to do this. Uh, this is so simple and so easy. Look for placemats. You know, uh, phone a friend uh, who does journaling. Maybe you can share some placemats. Maybe you can buy them one at a time. And if you go to some of these uh, home stores, you can buy individual placemats, quilted ones, where you can get something in a pattern that you really like. And look at that. Instantly, two journals. Easy peasy. 
So I'm going to put that aside. This, I don't know quite what I'm doing with it yet, but it just said pre-made journal. It must have been sort of a photo album cover. I don't see, you can't open it here. There is no opening, but on the back here, it's got sort of a little belly band thing on it and it's all stitched closed. So I don't know what the purpose was. I paid, there you go, 25 cents. So it must have been sort of a folio or a, maybe it held pictures. I don't know. This is all closed up. So whatever is here stays here. But, you know, I can easily put a signature in here with a hidden spine so that you don't even see this on the outside. So I don't have to poke through the outside. So I can just glue the spine right down into the center and be done. Instant um, little mini journal. Love it. Um, this would make also a great little needle book. If I filled the pages with um, just um, felt that I can um, uh, just stitch in or, or maybe um, put some holes in here with the um, crocodile and then just weave a ribbon or thread through here to tie the, the um, felt onto it. And then it becomes an instant little needle book that um, would get a lot of use. So yeah, another thing to keep an eye out for is Sometimes you find the strangest thing and I just look at it and go journal. And for 25 cents, again, why would I leave this behind, right? An interesting find. I paid a little bit more than I normally would for this kind of stuff, but it's beautiful. Um, it was $5.99 for the two books and they're called a uh, unicorn illustrated book with space for notes. So it's like a little journal or, you know, a notepad. But the pictures in here are beautiful. So there's lots of pictures with um, space to write in, or you get the whole page to write in, and on the back side there's uh, different illustrations. Some of them are quite pretty. Lots of tree of life. Lots of unicorns. Ve just a oh, look at that butterfly. Isn't that gorgeous? Um, so just some beautiful pictures in here all throughout the book that would be fun to use. Very mystical looking, very fantasy like. Um, oh, look at that. Brenda, there's a unicorn and some mushrooms in the background. How fun. <laughs> she must just laugh when she hears this. And here's the second one. Uh, again, illustrated book for, with notes and, and space to write. So it's got the same idea, a little bit different pictures. I do have a plan for doing a book sort of like this in the future. This one's got a little bit of gold and um, kind of an olivey green in the background. Um, but just some beautiful images that I could use. So these will come apart and, and get used uh, for um, journal making. Definitely. Love that. That's very pretty. Nice uh, end pages that can be used and cut up for tags and journal cards as well. So in the end, even though it was $5.99, I probably did take my 20% off because I don't usually go to Valley Village without a coupon. And I had quite a handful when I, uh, when we, when I came to uh, Winnipeg. So for $6, you know, six times eight. Uh, oh no, we went on the Wednesday, on the Tuesday. This was on the Tuesday. Uh, Thelma and I went. So I would have got my 30% off. So yeah, then it's not so bad. Uh, but yeah, either way, it was uh, a good deal in the end. So that's all I can show you for today. I have, I haven't even gotten to half the bag. Uh, it's still sitting here. So suitcase to part two will be coming shortly, <laughs> maybe Sunday if I have time. So that's it. That's all for today's video. Uh, thank you so much for watching. It is Wednesday, but this will air on Thursday. Um, and this leaves me time on Thursday to finish up all my happy mail and get that out in the mail. Uh, and who knows, maybe I'll have time to do another video as well. Uh, thank you so much for watching uh, and I wish you all a very creative day and a creative week and I look forward to seeing you all soon. Bye for now.